Accounting for bad debts expense. There are two main methods to account for bad debts. A direct write-off method and the allowance method. The allowance method uses the percentage of sales method or the aging method to estimate bad debts expense. Please review the estimation of bad debts video to understand the difference between the two methods and how they are implemented. Let's illustrate the direct write-off method. According to the direct write-off method, bad debts expense is recorded and the accounts receivable is closed when a customer defaults. So assume that a company makes a sale to customer A for $10,000. The accounts receivable of customer A in the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger will be debited together with the general account receivable account. The sales revenue account will be credited for the same amount. Now assume that the company makes a sale to customer B for $5,000. Again, the account receivable of a customer B in the subsidiary ledger will be debited together with the general account receivable account. And the sales revenue account will be credited for the same amount. Within the same year, customer A pays the amount due, which is $10,000. Cash is collected, so it is debited and customer A's account in the subsidiary ledger and the general account receivable account is reduced by the amount collected by crediting them. Before the end of the period, customer B sends a bankruptcy notice. In such a case, customer B's account must be written off. The journal entry is debit, bad debt expense, and credit customer B's account in the account receivable subsidiary ledger for $5,000. After posting this journal entry, customer B's account balance is zero, and the account receivable general account is reduced as well. Remember that we have to care about the matching principle. The matching principle indicates that revenues of a period should be matched with expenses of the same period that is related to the generation of such revenue. In this case, there is no violation of matching principle, since customer B defaulted in the same period. But what if customer B defaulted in a following period and not in the same period? The same journal entry will be recorded, debiting bad debts expense and crediting customer B's account, but this will create a problem. The sales of customer B is recorded as sales revenue in period 1, and the bad debts expense is recorded in period 2. In this case, the matching principle is violated. This is because the bad debts expense, which is related to period 1's sales, is recorded in period 2, and is being matched with the revenue of period 2. That is why accounting standards don't approve such method except in very rare situations. The allowance method. The basic concept is this. Bad debts expense related to sales of a period must be matched with the sales in the same period. So bad debts expense of period 1 is matched with the sales revenue of period 1. Also, bad debts expense of period 2 is matched with the sales revenue of period 2. As illustrated in the estimation of bad debts expense video, the amount of bad debts expense could be reasonably estimated. Assume a company made credit sales for $25,000 to three customers as follows. Customer X, $10,000, customer Y, $8,000, and customer Z, $7,000. The total account receivable control account shows a debit balance of $25,000. The bad debt expense is estimated to be $1,500. In this case, we need to record such an expense in the same period. If we assume that $25,000 is the total sales of the company, we need to deduct $1,500 as bad debts expense during the period, because it is related to the sales in this period. The problem is, how do we deduct such an expense without reducing any of the account receivable accounts in the subsidiary ledger? We need to know how much each customer owes, and at the same time we don't want to report the whole account receivable balance while we know that a portion of it might be uncollected. The solution to this problem is to create a contrast account, that is, against the asset. In other words, its normal balance is credit. This contrast account is deducted from the asset account, which is account receivable. The contrast account is called allowance for doubtful accounts, or AVDA for short. 
it is credited and bad debts expense is debited by 1500 By this method, the account receivable will appear on the balance sheet with their total value and the AFDA will be deducted to get the net of account receivable. On the statement of financial position or the balance sheet and under the current asset side, you will find account receivable with a total of $25,000. Then the AFDA is subtracted to get a net of account receivable of $23,500. By this method, the account receivable, other control account and individual accounts in the subsidiary ledger are untouched while the AFDA is used to reduce the account receivable in total without reducing any specific account. Assume that in period 2, customer X paid the amount due. Cash is debited and customer X account in the subsidiary ledger is credited by $10,000. You will notice that the account receivable control account is also reduced. Customer Y also paid the amount due and the same journal entry is recorded but with $8,000 in this case. The account receivable control account is also reduced. Customer Z pays $6,000 as part of the amount due. The same journal entry is also recorded with $6,000. Customer Z went bankrupt, and in such a case, the account must be written up. In other words, its balance must be equal to zero. In such a case, we will use the AVDA account instead of bad debts expense. The AVDA account is debit for $1,000 and customer Z's account in the subsidiary ledger is credited by $1,000 to write it off, in other words, to close it. You will notice that the AVDA account is reduced by $1,000 and its new balance is $500. Also notice that the bad debts expense for the second period is not affected. As the AVDA was created in the previous period and the bad debts expense for the sale is already recorded in the previous period. What if the AFDA balance was not enough? Let's assume that customer Z didn't pay anything and went bankrupt. The AFDA balance, which is $1,500, is not enough. In such a case, we will still debit AFDA with the $7,000 and it will have a balance of $5,500 in the debit side. We call that an abnormal balance because its normal balance is credit. When such a case occurs, it means that our estimation of bad debts was not correct. The business has to consider reviewing their estimate of bad debts in the current year. Now assume that the business is using the aging method for estimating AVDA, and it is calculated to be $3,000. Given that the AVDA balance is debit for $5,500, in such a case the adjustment entry for the bad debts expense for period 2 is as follows. Debit bad debts expense by $8,500 and credit AVDA by the same amount. The reason is that if we credit AVDA by $5,500, its balance will be zero. Then we add the desired balance, which is $3,000. In the end, the total amount to be credited is $8,500. In case that AVDA had a credit balance of $500, as in the case when customer Z paid part of the debt, and in order to raise the AFDA balance to $3,000, it would be credited by $2,500 only as follows. Let's now assume that the business is using the percentage of sales method to estimate bad debts expense, and the estimated bad debts expense is $2,500. The balance of AFDA is $500 in credit. In such a case, we are going to debit the bad debts expense and credit the AVDA account for $2,500 regardless of the balance of AVDA. This is because in this case we are estimating the bad debts expense, not the AVDA's balance. On the other hand, if the AVDA had a debit balance, the business should adjust its estimates and estimate a suitable bad debts expense to make the AVDA's balance credit again. This would be the case in the previous example. When customer Z defaulted for $7,000 and AVDA had a debit balance of $5,500. In such a case, the business might estimate the bad debts expense to be $8,000. Written off accounts could also be recovered if the customer is willing to pay and return to do business. Let's assume that customer Z is willing to pay the previous amounts due and willing to do business with the company. Assume that the AFDA balance is credit for 
recalled that customer Z's account was written off when it had a balance of $7,000. The first step is to revive this account again by returning its debit balance back and adding $7,000 back to AVDA as it has been deducted from it when the account was written off. The second step is to collect the money from the customer and at that point cash increases and the customer balance is settled.